A big warm hello to all you Clo users. My name is Ahana and I'm a 3D designer at Clo. And today we are going through our 7.1 webinar. Super excited for all of you to see all the new updates and new features that we have in 7.1. The entire Clo team has really worked hard to make these features really helpful for all of you. So we really hope you like it. And if you have any questions, we have a live chat going on, so you can put them there. Or if you see this at any later time, you can drop in your questions in the comment section and someone from Clo team will reach out to you. So let's now dive into the video and have some fun learning together. So the first key feature that we are going to show is the update in the UI. We are very excited to introduce the new trim tab in our object browser, which will make it easy for the users to manage and customize multiple trims within Clo. So all of your workflow basically remains the same for adding the trims, but let's look at the update. So to get started, you can uh, see the add button over here. You can click on the add button. And by clicking there, you can select a trim file in one of the following formats that you see on the screen. Now you should know that OBJ or trim or FPX files works best for trims. So you can select your file and you can just click open and bring them in Clo. Once you do that, you will see a pop-up menu and your trim will be added to your object browser. Now from the object browser, you can simply drag and drop it to your 3D window. It is as simple as that. Now you can continue to edit it and adjust it as you would normally do using the gizmo tool or the glue icon that you see here and you can decide the placement as you like. Here I am just going to adjust the placement a little bit more um, until I'm happy with how it looks. Now you can also duplicate your trim in the 3D window. A lot of you might already know that, but what is nice is that it will stay in the same style this time. So what you do to one style will now affect both of the trims or buckles in this case. So you can see when we changed the material, it affected both the trims here. Now another thing is that you can select a trim and just simply copy it just like you can copy your fabrics and buttons or zippers. So if you click on copy, you can see that the trim style has been copied. When you do this, you don't have a copy in the 3D window. That is because you, you have basically just copied the style. Now to delete a trim style, just click on the delete button in the object browser. Let's say you wanted to delete one of the trims or see them. Know that you can still see all of your trims in the trim scene tab. You have your materials here. You can see your trims or basically the buckle. When you click on it, it will select the trim and delete any unnecessary trims by selecting them and pressing the delete key. We have updated our avatar editor UI in 7.1 to make it even easier and even more user friendly. So here you will still be able to access the avatar menu through the top menu bar as you could before. But what is different this time is that the editor window will now replace the 2D window as you can see on the screen. So you can easily switch between the two windows. So that shouldn't be any problem. Also, you can pop this window out if you want and have a separate window if you want to. So at the top bar here, you can switch between default, custom and standard sizes. What is nice about standard sizing and also the default size is that you can select any of these sizes and switch between them. 
So we have all our different avatar sizes over here for men's, women's, kids, basically any and all avatars we have in Clo. You can do this for the default as well. And if you have custom sizes, you can load them as well. So over here, if you have any custom sizes, you can bring that. You also have a reset button to go back to the default settings, which is pretty great. And you can also save your avatar that you have customized uh, very quickly and easily. There is also this total body box, which is pretty much the same as before, but a few things have been added. You still have the total high point options, your inseam options and different units of measurements as well. What we also have here is the chest circumference, but we have also added a new addition here, which is weight. You can input the weight of the avatar and set the unit in both kgs and pounds, which is pretty great. So you can input any weight in here and switch back to kgs or lbs if you want. You might have noticed that when I switch to weight, the bar for total body shape here gets activated. So these will allow you to quickly change between different body shapes that you see in human beings. So this is pretty great that you get to choose between different body shapes. Now you will notice that if we switch back to chest circumference, these will be deactivated. So the total body shapes will only work with weight. They work with men and women only at the moment and not kids. So again, if we go and change the shape, you can see the changes happening on your avatar in the 3D window. And this is pretty great, right? Let's now switch to women's avatar. So we'll just bring that in. So again, here we have the total body. We have a few more options in the width section with weight being a new addition. So once you select weight, the total body shape gets activated. You can see that on the screen. So you can click at any one of them and again switch between different body shapes. And here in the details, there is a new section called simple. So as you can also see with simple, we have circumference and length. Also, we have upper body and lower body. Now the total shape will still work with the simple details section and I can still change out these measurements as well. So we can still change the measurements if we want to and you can input the values that you have. However, um, if you change it to basic or advanced human body dress form, you'll see that the total body shape gets deactivated. So you can see that the box is inactive here. What you will also see is that we have rearranged our detail section a little bit. So it is a bit more organized and easier for you to understand what to adjust first and then second and then move on to the next one. We have split this by upper and lower along with circumference and length. If we switch to advanced body dress form, you can still see this. So this is going to be seen in every detail section. It is always best to add in all your circumference measurements at once than all your length measurements at once. That will really make your process very easy and efficient. This new organization will be seen in kids avatar as well. However, as mentioned, the total body shape will not be seen. 
Now, are you ready for a game changer in your design workflow? We are introducing the auto arrange feature in 7.1. This amazing tool helps you arrange your DXF patterns and automatically arranges them onto the avatar for you. This saves you a lot of time and effort. So here we have brought in a DXF pattern for top. Now it is best to apply symmetry. So we are simply applying symmetry to the patterns. Now let's go to the 3D toolbar window and here we will select the auto 3D arrange tool. We will select proceed in the pop-up window that appears. Now comes the best part. Clo will automatically arrange these pattern pieces on the avatar for you. The best part here is if the pattern pieces don't arrange perfectly by themselves, you can use the pop-up window to go back a few steps or make adjustments, or you can also go some steps forward. You can simply click on OK. Let's now do this for the bottom pattern pieces as well and see how it works there. So we'll bring in a DXF for bottoms. Again, it's best and advisable to apply symmetry. So once again, we will select the auto 3D arrange. Let's wait for it to load. Now the waistband here is a little out of place. So we, maybe we can hit back or the next and see what happens. So I'll press OK for now and I will still use the blue arrangement points that are always helpful that we have in Clo, and we will place them in correct manner. So overall, the auto arrange feature makes arranging patterns in Clo faster and easier than ever before. So don't miss out on this exciting feature and try it out for yourself. We have introduced a highly awaited feature in Clo 7.1, which is Texture Generator. You can now seamlessly generate texture maps with scans or captured images and check the results within real time in 3D window without even leaving or closing Clo. Isn't that amazing? So let's see how that works. So go to the object browser and you can create a new fabric here. And right next to it, there is a new button added that you can see, uh, which is a texture generator button. You can simply click on that and you will see the texture generator window. Now let's quickly see how all of this is structured in Clo. So you have a top window and a bottom window. Uh, in the top window, here you will basically bring your scanned images and in the bottom window, you will see the preview of your texture. Now, once the texture generator window is open, moving towards the bottom left side, you can click the open button to bring in one of the images that you have scanned. So let's bring in um, this stripes over here. Now you can see that the original image is loaded to full screen in the top window. If this is a very closed up image, you can simply zoom in and out of the texture by rolling the mouse wheel and let's, let's adjust the size a little bit. We can walk around until we're happy and how the image looks. Now at the top of the window, you will find all the information that you need about the size and the resolution of your image. You can also adjust the scale and resolution to your liking. But just make sure to turn on the link button if you want to keep the aspect ratio intact. This way, both your measurements will be linked together. Now that the ratio is correct and you're happy with your image size, you can start selecting the texture. So this is the most fun part. Let's click and drag and create a marquee box. You have to simply find the minimum area where the fabric pattern repeats and you have to drag it into the edit window. Again, let's just um, wait for it to load. Now be sure to zoom in and out of the preview window 
to make sure that you are getting the kind of results that you want. You also have to keep in mind that if the area that you select is too small, you may end up with an unnatural repeated image. So you can use the grid over here to check if everything aligns properly. And once you've selected the area, you can choose to either preview the results or you can go to your 2D window and apply the fabric directly to your garment or any other assets that you might have. Now, here is the cool thing. Everything that we do in the texture window will now be reflected in the 3D window in real time, which is, I think, pretty great. So when you apply the fabric to a garment in your 3D window, you can see whatever changes you're making in your repeat over here will be reflected on the garment in real time. And you can make any necessary adjustments that you require now, if you're not happy with the repeat and if you want to revise it, don't worry. There are several options available to help you revise it and achieve the kind of look you want. So you can first try selecting a different selection. So we've created another marquee box over here. Now this will recalculate the repeat based on the new area. And this will give you opportunity to quickly see multiple options and choose the one that best works for you. Now, if the color of the original image is uneven, it can be difficult to achieve a uniform brightness. In this case, you can use the equalize tool to help even out the colors. Now, simply enter a value between 0 0.01 to 1 and you can gradually increase the value until you find the most even color. Now, if you look next to equalize, there is one more icon that you will see. Let's talk about that. Another useful tool is the smooth option, which can be helpful for images that were scanned unevenly or they have rough or uneven edges. So by applying smooth, you can align the weave areas evenly which will help you achieve an even more smoother, more cohesive look. So finally, if you want more control over your repeat, you can switch to the manual mode by selecting the icon on the bottom right of the marquee box. And this will allow you to manually adjust the repeat as needed, which will give you complete control and freedom over the final result. Now you can move the corners a little up and down, scale it and make changes as required. And I think all of this is very exciting and this is very helpful for all the edits that we made in texture. Now let's talk about fabric types a little bit. So texture types of fabric can be divided into three main categories. One is solid fabrics with tiny weaves. Next could be fabrics with regular large patterns such as checks and stripe patterns and fabrics with irregular patterns like geometric patterns. If you go to the fabric type option in the texture generator, you will see that this will allow you to specify which type of fabric you are working with and you can have a big impact on your final result with this. So the default fabric type is plain, which works well with both solid fabrics and fabrics with regular patterns. However, if you are working with an irregular or specialized fabric, you may want to consider using one of the other fabric type options. For example, if you're working with a large regular pattern fabric like checks or stripes, you might want to try repeat pattern option. You should keep in mind that when you're working with fabrics that are irregular, it can be helpful to prepare your normal map in advance before uh, you switch your fabric type. This is because the result of your texture takes into account the normal map information as well. So if you have a scanner that creates multiple maps, you can import all of them at once and Clow will automatically match and load them including the normal map, which is very helpful. 
So here to the left, you can see we have a diffuse map and a normal map. That is great, right? So when you select on either of these, you will be able to view that map for your image. So if you select on normal map, you will be able to view the normal map. And if you select on diffuse map, you will be able to view that map in the place of your image. Now that all of this is set up, we can go to our fabric type. And for this, it would be suggested since it is a large stripe, we change it to repeat pattern. Then we can add in and adjust and bring in the marquee box and you can see the repeat and everything happening over here. For those patterns which are a little bit more regular, it is best to use random color pattern. So whether you're working with solid, regular or irregular fabrics, the texture generator has you covered with a range of options to help you achieve the kind of perfect texture you want. Now let's say we want to save this image. We can hit save. The pop-up window will appear as usual. And we will have the option of diffuse and normal map. Depending on how many maps have been brought in, you can see them all there. Select them, click OK, and Clo will save those maps too. So I'm simply checking on the diffuse and normal map here. And now we have this save window. We can name our file since we have stripes here. I'm just going to name it as stripe 2 maybe. When we hit save, there they are. Diffuse and normal maps saved. I, it'll also rename it. So you can see that it has renamed it as Stripe Diffuse and Stripe Normal. And now that we are happy with what you've done, we've done such a great job with working around this. We can simply hit Apply and Close. And there we have it. The texture that we worked on, it has been applied to the fabric. We have introduced a new feature that will elevate your designs to a new height of realism. With this update, you will now be able to express zipper teeth as an object rather than just a texture. This will greatly enhance the realism of your image and 3D renders. Now let's select the zipper. All you have to do is within the property editor, you will find the option to change from texture to OBJ. It is as easy as that. You can already see how realistic this looks, right? Additionally, you will be able to express different types of teeth using the teeth preset like metal or plastic. So maybe we can give it some color, match it with our garment and you can see how realistic it looks. So once you've made the switch to OBJ, be sure to take a look at the render window and you can see how much more realistic it looks now. Pretty great, right? So we have changed our great review mode to become an editor. This will make the process more seamless and efficient. So you can go to the editor and from there you can go to the great review. And now if you see on bottom left, you can easily switch between 2D, 3D and the review window. So switching between the windows will be very easy. One of the benefits of this new editor mode is the ability to make edits in the 2D window and see those updates being reflected on all the graded sizes. So this is going to be great because here if I switch to the 2D window, I can make edits in the grading by using the grading tools and you will see the changes being reflected in the editor window. So by selecting a specific size in the review editor, if you click on simulation button, you will be able to view the updates on that specific size. And how great is that? Additionally, if you switch to the 3D window, it will also show the updated medium size in this case. You will also have the option to update all the sizes at once by clicking the simulation button on the side toolbar. 
though it should be noted that this may take some time for the program to register the changes for each size. So it is preferred that you edit one size at a time. Now, if you do all of them together, this will definitely take much more time than just doing one at a time. So you will have to be a little patient with that. So let's give it some time for the last image to load as well. Now let's take a look at the review editor layout a little bit. So the layout of the editor remains similar to the previous version with the image size displayed at the top left. And you can see the options to change the layout, which is you can either view it in the wrap mode, horizontal, vertical. You can switch between these layouts very easily. And you can enter full screen mode as well. So as we have already talked about it, you can simulate all the sizes at once or individually, which is suggested. You also have the ability to save all the images. Now you can also lock or unlock these images, which basically means that you can move all the images either together or you can move one image at a time. And you can change the fabric texture. You can check the fit maps. So this just makes the process very easy and you can easily switch between all of these options. You can do everything here in one place and you can also change the avatar textures. So another very important key feature that we have in 7.1 is the roll up feature. This is a tool that will allow users to create roll up styles on clothes. So earlier you used to rely on fold arrangement pins and these things to actually create these roll up effects. But now we have a tool that will let you do the roll up very easily just by inputting some numbers. So let's talk about how you can use it. Let's look at the pants over here. Please note that the particle distance and the thickness collision right now are 15 and 2.5 respectively. So you simply have to go to the edit pattern tool. Select both your front and the back. You can see that it is selected in your 3D window as well. And then just right click on the pattern outline. There is a roll up option that you will see over here. You can see it on the screen. And when you select that, a pop up menu will appear. Now you can change the number of roll ups here, which basically means how many rolls or folds you want and the, the distance that you want between them and how wide you want each roll to be. So right now I am inputting 30 over here. Let's also maybe change the number of rolls to be two and you can see the values over here. Let's now wait for it to load. So once loaded, you can see that it is updated and you have a roll. You can also see that the particle distance is 10. That is because is trying to make it as stable as possible and having a lower particle distance will help with that. The second thing it will do is it will change the additional thickness collision instead of 2.5 it is now 4. Now again this is to make it more stable so that there is more distance between the pattern pieces. Now let's simulate and see what happens. So now one thing to note here is that the change is not symmetrical. This is because this feature is mostly used for styling purposes and usually while styling symmetry is not required or necessary always. So we can go to the other pant leg and repeat the same steps again. Now you can still change the collision so it is still less bulkier but we suggest you first simulate 
the optimal stabilized version so you do that first and then when that is simulated you can maybe then go ahead and make changes in the additional thickness collision and you can then change the particle distance if you like but first go through the optimal stabilized version and then make these changes and that was about the roll up feature i think it's a great addition to glow this looks pretty great right the pants and the styling We have added an option to auto convert the motion files. This will allow the users to convert various motion files from various platforms into motion files for Clue avatars. Now the best part is that these converted motion files will be compatible with all Clue avatars. So first you will have to go to avatar menu and then from there you can go to avatar convert to motion. Once that happens, it will then automatically switch to the animation window. Now you will see this pop up that appears and next all you have to do is you have to select the gender that you wish to use this motion for and then click on open and then open the file. There you can select your motion file from your computer. Now you can just press convert and once this pop up comes, you can just close it. Now click on play and then you can review your motion. It is as easy as that. Now once you have reviewed your motion, to, you can simply save the file. You can go to file, save as and save it as motion. Now you can save this as motion file which is great because it is now compatible for all the Clue avatars that are available. So here we can use this kid avatar as well let's switch that up and we've brought in the kid avatar over here and now let's bring in the motion file let's try it here pretty great right the animation editor ui has been improved in this update to provide a more user-friendly experience so if you are also familiar with Marvelous Designer, you will notice that the UI has been merged to be the same. On your left, you can see what 7.0 used to look like and to your right, you can see the new 7.1 interface. One of the big changes that you can see in the animation editor is the animation editor text that has been taken off to give more space uh, and this one will display more animation tools. Additionally, a slider bar has also been added where you can see the number of frames, which I think will be very helpful. This part displays the total number of frames of the current animation editor. You can go from 10,000 to minus 10,000. You can also see the start and end of the currently displayed animation range. Last but not the least, the previous frame and the next frame options have also been added to move from frame to frame more easily. So this will also make trimming and editing much more convenient. So we hope that all of the additions will make the editing process much easier for you. So one really great update that we have done is that we have actually extended our registration options for avatars. So now instead of just registering shoes and hair, you can also register glasses and earrings. Many more options will come in later releases, but for now, let's have a look at how we can register earrings or glasses over here. And due to this, we have also changed the name. So if you go in the avatar menu, you can see register accessories over here. So let's dive in on how we can do this. Now to do that, we will first select the avatar and we will delete it. I have these glasses that I created here in Clo, and I'm going to export those as an FBX file. For that, let's go to file, export FBX. 
I'm just walking you through how you can export and create within Clo. If you want to create something in Clo and then register it, you can. So one really important thing here is the naming. You have to name it as it is. So since we are registering glasses, we will register them as glasses. Now, even if you're making some sort of earrings, you will have to name it as earrings for Clo to read it as earrings. Now, let's talk about the export setting for this particular file. I make sure that I exported this as single object, thick textured and unified UV checked. These things were uh, all of these were checked on. Now we can go ahead and register start to register this as an accessory. So we are going to go to the avatar menu, then register accessories. So we will have this pop up menu coming up on the screen. And now in the accessory type, we can select glasses so that clone knows what it is. And now we have to choose the FBX file that we saved earlier. So we will open our FBX file and click on create. Simply name your accessory file, whatever you want. For example, I'm putting sunglasses over here and we will save it. Now you can close this. So we have another file over here. We will open that and let's add the saved glasses over here in this file. You can see that we have our saved glasses file over here and we can simply double click on it. And just like that, we have those sunglasses put on the avatar. She looks very cool, right? Now I have used these exact same steps to actually create some earrings earlier. So let's try and put those on too. simply double click on your earring accessory file and you will see that those earrings are added. Now we can select these earrings and adjust the materials to make it look much more realistic. So we can change it to metal. You can also change the colors and you can see how realistic it looks. We have added in a post type within Glow that will allow you to adjust only the hands of your avatars. This will be really helpful if you want to put accessories on or for any styling purposes. So we can simply go into our avatar menu and the, then we can go into the poses and then you will find a folder here called hand poses. As you can see, there are a bunch of pre-created hand poses for us to use. We can just double click on any one of them and a pop up will appear. Now in the drop down here, we have a few op options. Let's hit left hand. When we hit OK, we will see that only the left hand of the avatar adjusts to the new pose. Next, we can just adjust our right hand. So we can again just drag this in, do right hand and only the right hand will get affected. And then finally, we can bring in one more hand pose and just do both the hands this time. When we hit OK, you will see the change on the screen. This option also works for just the regular poses. So full body, for example, here we can select this and in the drop down, we have full body, but we also have both hands, left hand and right hand. So if we select full body, we can simply hit OK and now the whole body will adjust along with the hands. So if we wanted to have just picked the hands, we could have done that. Now, if we'd like to save the hand pose because we created this amazing one, we can simply go to file, save as hand pose. Then we can name our new hand pose and you can save your file as you want. And you can see that this file has a different extension and it will also save the hand pose in the library over here. Have fun working with this. In Pro 7.1, we are now updating our avatars to be more compatible between one another so that their assets can be used across all the genders and ages. This will include motion and pose file as well. Here in the library, you can see that we have multiple female poses. So originally, you could only use a female pose on female avatar. For example, if we bring in one of the poses here onto our female avatar, it will change quickly. So let's have a look at that. Let's bring in one of the poses. So maybe I'll select this one for now. Let's hit OK. And you can see that the pose has been changed.
Similarly, we can bring in any other pose. And if we click on OK, that will change very easily too, right? But now in 7.1, what interesting thing you can do is you can go to the male poses and bring in the male pose on one of the female avatars as well. So here, let's bring in the male pose and you can see that it, it worked. This also works for animation and motion files. So here we can go into the animation mode and now for kind of like a gender neutral garment, we can maybe use a feminine walking pose on the male avatar and it works perfectly as you can see. Doesn't he look great while walking like that and in that garment? So earlier we could deactivate the whole avatar, but now in 7.1, you can deactivate parts of the avatar individually. And now you also have the option of deactivating and hiding the avatar simultaneously. For now, let's select the hair and right click and deactivate it. Or else you can select the hair, deactivate and hide the hair at the same time. This feature will be useful when your garment includes a hood or a cap so that it doesn't collide with the avatar. Not only the hair, but you can also deactivate the body parts, which is great, right? So let's go with the arms and deactivate them and then we will simulate. Once you simulate, you will find that the sleeves are falling towards the body since the arms are not active. This will be really helpful for um, Every time you ever want a mannequin look or when you don't want to have arms but you want it styled like that. Pretty interesting, right? So users now will be able to edit avatar tape on the avatar itself which will make the entire process very convenient, right? So it will provide more flexibility for the users to measure or align the garment. All you have to do is select the avatar tape and mark with the tape. Instead of redrawing, if you make a mistake, you can now freely drag and move the tape around on the avatar. As you move the tape, you will see a preview. So this will give you a better understanding and it will help you to continue editing as much as you want and for as long as you want. This feature works for both straight lines and circumference tape as well. So for that, let's first select the circumference tape from the 3D toolbar and let's mark it on the avatar. And now using the avatar editor, we can move the points just like how we did for the straight line. So I'm going to zoom in for a better view and you can move the points to the positions you want. So this will be easy, but will make the entire process very convenient. We have updated the parametric pattern in such a way that you didn't know you needed it. But now that it's there, you're definitely going to use it. So the updates are made in such a way that it is going to make your work even more efficient and easier. You can simply open the parametric pattern through the editor tool at the top bar. So now we have the parametric pattern window over the 3D window. You can flip or switch between both the windows very quickly as usual. Or if you want to see both the windows, you can pop out the parametric pattern window and you can place it elsewhere between 2D and 3D workspace or anywhere you want. For now, let's keep it in the 3D window space. One of the big updates that we've done is that now you can see a preview of your pattern. So I can select a number here and you can see a preview being visible in the 2D window. So cool, right? This will make it easier for you to understand how the pattern will look according to the measurements that you have changed and then you can make decisions accordingly. 
So now you will not need to redo the pattern until you get it right. Very efficient, right? Also, another simple yet important update is that if you have um, input a measurement outside of the amount that is allowed for the numbers and measurement line, it will turn red within the parametric pattern window and the preview will just disappear. Now let me go ahead and make some changes in the measurements. So I'm simply inputting some values over here, changing them a little bit and just adding some more numbers. Once you have added desired measurements, what if you wanted to see the measurements another time or maybe you, you wanted to save it? Well, drum rolls everyone. <laughs> now you can do that too. You can now save or load the measurements in CVS format. You can save the measurements by clicking on save and all you have to do is name it and it will save a CVS file. This is a great way to save your template. Also, this is how the templates should look like if you want to load it in the parametric pattern window. Make sure it's the same kind of template and if you forget and click on load, there will be a pop-up reminding you to make sure it's the same kind of template or file format and then click on OK. Now your saved measurements will show up and the preview will be visible in the 2D window. So it's all linked and the workflow is very, very smooth. Uh, now I shall turn on the symmetry and add sleeves with symmetry. Next, I'm going to show you my favorite update within parametric pattern. I'm sure this is going to surprise you even more. Before clicking on create, make sure there is an avatar in the 3D window. You might wonder why. Let me tell you. But before that, let's move the parametric pattern window to the side for the surprise to be visible in real time. I'm bringing it to the center. I will just adjust it a little bit until I'm happy with how my layout looks. Now let's make some edits to the pattern that we have. So let's now maybe change the back neck drop a little bit. Now click on create. And let's place the patterns over here. And ta-da! The patterns are arranged as well as sewn in the 3D window. You have skipped so many steps just by clicking on create. Now click on simulate and you are done. Have you ever wished to add curve points exactly at the measurement you want on a segment line or split them uniformly? In simple terms, split the curve points. Well, 7.1 provides you with this feature. All you have to do is follow these steps. So first go to the 2D edit from the 2D toolbar and select edit curve point tool. Hover over the pattern outline where you want the points to be added and right click. Now the pop-up window is visible and it lets you split however you want. You also have uniform split that allows you to equally distribute the points. Split by length helps you change and split length and the number of segments. So we can simply add a segment length here. You can also choose the position of the points. It could be current, reverse or center. Also, you can split it into two lines. For now, let's go with uniform split. Use the edit curve point tool to edit the curve and the points as you like. Another extremely useful update in 2D tools is that now you can change links of multiple segments at the same time. Let me show you how. So this is a very simple procedure. First, you will have to go to the edit pattern tool. Now you simply have to select the segment. 
hold down shift and then select the other segments as well. Once the selection is done, right click and select change length. So this pop-up will appear and this will help you decide the length and the direction of the pattern line. In the distance, you can decide the direction to be in the start or end or you can also assign both the sides. For now, let's go ahead with both and that's it. Have you ever struggled splitting internal lines between pattern pieces while making patches or pockets? Well, this struggle is over now. Now you can split the internal lines just with a few clicks. For that, with the help of transform pattern, let me first clone this pattern piece as an internal shape and place it where I'd like to be on the front pattern. After adjusting and editing the shape as you want, right click and select divide over seam line. Now the internal line will be separated over both the pattern pieces as you can see. Please note that the internal line which are split and are not linked which basically means that change made on one side of the internal line does not affect the other. So let me go ahead and sew the pocket to the pants and that's it. As simple as that. Now Close 7.1 has few updates in POM tool as well to make sure that the users are receiving the most accurate measurements while still keeping the tools extremely user friendly. Isn't that great? So these updates will help you to get extremely accurate results which will provide with better measurements and the workflow will be better within the 2D window. A lot of great improvements have been done for the users, so we really hope you like these. Unfortunately, a lot of restructuring was needed. Though this update is within close 7.1, it is so important to let you all know that the earlier versions of close 7.0 and below will not be seen within close 7.1. We will really try our best to improve this in the future releases so that we can accommodate for the earlier versions as well. But currently it is not possible. So as you can see, when I'm trying to open a 7.0 file in 7.1, there will be a pop-up warning me uh, that I will not see them up here. It will be visible in the object browser, but they won't be visible in the pattern. But now let's move on to the exciting part. Let's jump to the updates. So now with the help of POM tool, you can negate the measurements between the dots. Um, let me explain what that means. So once if you click on one point of your pattern and if you go to the other side of the pattern, you will see that it now excludes the space taken up by the dots. So you can see that space is not calculated over here. Now, another POM update is that this time you can even trace the POM. For that, you will have to use the edit pattern tool and you basically have to select the pattern line, right click and then you will see trace as POM. So now you don't have to worry and go to the trace tool and trace the POM. So when you trace it as POM, it automatically links it to the pattern. You can directly go to the edit POM tool, select the line, right click and you see that there are a lot of different options available. So now I could make it a straight measurement. I could do X or Y and all of that. You are provided with so many options and you can go back to the segment type and then it will link it back. The fun fact over here is that your POM will move and adjust according to the pattern changes you make up. Uh, you don't have to remark the POM if any changes are made in the patterns. You can also use the POM tool just as you would normally do by selecting one point, uh, clicking and then selecting the other and double clicking to end. Now you can simply go to the edit tool and make it a segment type so that it links up to each other 
and then you can go ahead and make as many edits as you want. We have an amazing addition to close 7.1. You can now view your graded pattern sizes in the property editor. Not only view the sizes, but also switch between the sizes within the property editor. For that, I'm going to turn on my grading in 2D window. However, you may choose to keep it switched on or off. That is up to you. Let me turn it on so that it will be easier for uh, you all to see it. So first we will select the pattern using the transform pattern tool and now in the property editor under the information you can go to the grading section. So first you will be able to view the size range but under the grading drop down you will be able to view the base size of the selected pattern and you can then use the drop down to switch between the sizes. This will change all the patterns within that size run. Another addition is that when I go to the grading tab in the object browser, you can see that the changes are visible here as well. Similarly, if we change the name over here in the grading tab, you can see that it has changed in the property editor. They are both interlinked and hence changing one will change the other two. As we switch between the grading sizes, it will switch in the 2D window as well as the grading tab. And interestingly, in the 3D window as well. Very much interlinked, right? Here is another exciting grading update. So now you can select multiple grading points at once using all the grading tools. Let's run through it right now. Let's select one of our edit grading tools. You can either choose edit grading, edit curve grading, edit grading each or edit curve grading each tool. Let's select the tool. And select a point and we will hold shift to select multiple points within the same size or you could do this across various sizes. You can also adjust multiple sizes or sections of the patterns at once. This new feature will help you make your workflow much faster and much more efficient. And as I have previously mentioned, it will also work with grading curve tool as well. So let's see how to do the same with our grading curve tool. We can simply select the grading curve tool. Now again, you can click on one point and hold down shift to click all the points together. So we can select multiple points here. And now you can make adjustments accordingly. We have now included AVS file sizes for avatars when we pair avatars for grading. So let us get into our grading tab and see how it happens. So just go into the grading tab and select pair avatar option. The upcoming steps are very similar to pairing the avatar. So here I'm going to select update and you can see that I have all the avatars here. Now when I select the pair button, I have two options pair 3D form and add avatar size. I can select the add avatar size option and then bring in an ABS file. So this will basically allow me to bring in the avatar size that I want. Uh, it is a very quick and easy process to load all my avatars. So we can select our file from over here and click on open. Let's quickly add all the sizes one by one. And thanks to our new review editor, we can now simulate all the sizes and review them all at once. That's great. Now you can edit the style lines more precisely in 3D window. There is an amazing and interesting update that is going to make things very, very easy for you and Chloe.
You can adjust the style line edit using the precision box. First, let's select the edit style line tool. Now let's choose the point. You can move it to your liking and right click and then just input your numbers. You can do the same with move style line tool. Select the style line, right click after dragging and inputting the measurements as you want. Now you can scale the pattern with the scale styling tool. Simply select the pattern line, right click and add your desired values. Add positive and negative amount to increase or decrease the scale respectively. And as usual, you can see the changes in your 2D in real time. You can now partially strengthen the pattern to certain parts of the garment. For that, you will have to select the mesh tool. So let's see how that works. Let's choose mesh brush tool and then we will select a certain area. Let's go with the sleeves and now I will be selecting this area of the sleeve. We will simply right click and strengthen. Now to unstrengthen, you will have to right click again and unstrengthen. So now let's select with lasso tool. Let's see how that works. Again, right click, strengthen it. You can do the same with select mesh box tool and you can strengthen it in the same way. You can adjust the strength. You can increase or decrease the values. So let's keep it low for now, maybe 70. And now you can simulate your garment and make adjustments accordingly. This is going to be very helpful in your workflow. You will now be able to express different types of seams in Glow. You can create a much more realistic seam look with this feature. Let's apply this feature on the armhole. So let me zoom in a little bit over here so that you can see it properly. And I shall go ahead and select the edit sewing tool. Now let's select the sewing lines in the 2D window and go to the property editor. Here if you look, we have the 3D seam line. And if you open the drop down menu, you will see that there's a plain seam, which is what the default will be. So you can choose directional seam if you want to. Let's go ahead and choose the directional option. And you can find placement option right under it. And here you can select the direction of the seam. So you can either do A or B. Let's go with A for now and see what happens. So the changes that we made in the property editor are now visible in the 3D window. Now in 7.1, we can adjust the sewing tension. So what this will do is this will enable you to stretch out smaller pattern pieces like the neck band or your binding to the neck opening. And this will also allow you to adjust larger pattern pieces like sleeves into a smaller pattern like a armhole. So here you can see that we have our neck band placed and the neck band is slightly smaller than my neck opening. So first I am going to simulate so that you can see that the shirt moves up a little bit to accommodate the neck band. Now using the edit sewing tool, I'm going to select the sewing lines and switch, switch on the sewing tension. After switching on my sewing tension, you can see that we have the option to change the sewing line, line type 
either to ease or stretch and let's select the stretch and maybe set the ratio to 100 for now so on simulation you can see that the neck band has started to open up a little bit and it's regaining its original position you can even notice that when we move the t-shirt pattern down the neck band also moves along with it effortlessly this is great right I also have the option to adjust the ratio of the tension using my edit sewing tool. So if I increase the ratio of the neck band, it will stretch out even more and if we decrease the ratio, it will go back and you can also see that happening in the 3D window. Now let's check out ease. So now I'm going to select my armhole sewing lines and then we will select ease under the sewing line type. Let's set this at 100 ratio and we will simulate it. You can see that the sleeves have eased. As I mentioned before, we have the option to change the ratio here. So if we increase the ratio, the sleeve will stretch out even more. And if we make it smaller, it will ease into the armhole. It is now possible to create top stitches using custom OBJs in latest 7.1 update. This will make the top stitches much more realistic. So let's have a look at how that works. So first we will select the top stitch that has already been added to this bag by going into the top stitch tab in the object browser. I'm going to select this top stitch and click on the plus icon next to the shape in my property editor. You will be able to see a pop-up as soon as you click on it and you can change the parameters from here. I can set the scale of bringing in my OBJ and I can also decide on the axis conversion. This becomes important depending on which software you have used to create the OBJ. You may need to adjust the axis or the direction accordingly. And here you can bring in your file from the computer using the open all icon in the OBJ line. If you wish to edit the width or length of the OBJ, you can do so. In addition, you can also adjust the spacing. Once you bring in your OBJ, you will be able to see the preview of the same on the right. And if you make any changes to its length, width or the spacing, the preview will also change according to the measurements. Once you're happy, you can click OK and it will be added to your workspace. You may continue to edit the top stitch by adding colors or changing the type in the property editor. There is another improvement that we have made in the top stitch tool to facilitate smoother effects when applied to curve lines. So here I'm going to apply my top stitch to the garment. And when we zoom in, you can notice that the stitch line tends to break. So this issue has been fixed. So now you can select the top stitch and there is an option in the property editor to switch to smooth. So this will now make your top stitch look even more smoother. We have made an improvement within puckering much like with our top stitches. As you can see in the earlier versions of Clo, certain parts of the puckering would become overlapped or would cut off. Now in 7.1, we have rectified this to smooth out of the puckering. The steps will be the same as before. You simply have to select the puckering you wish to apply, then apply the puckering to your project just like you would do it normally. And you will see that the puckering doesn't cut off and it is much more smoother than previous versions. We have updated the zipper and puller to allow users to add different colors and materials to either the slider or puller within 7.1. This will allow you to have more control and options within Clo. So here we have a custom puller which was imported in advance. 
I can simply select the puller in the 3D window. Then we need to click again and you can see that only puller is selected this time. If you click again, just the lower part of the puller is selected. So as you keep clicking, you can keep narrowing down your selection. We can then move into the property editor and change the materials and the color. By following the same steps, I can select only the upper part of the puller and change the material and color. Now Clo is able to automatically create patterns within print layout mode when using the binding tool. So we hope that this addition uh, will help you in all the pricing and production needs for our Clo users. It's very simple. Let's have a look at that. All you have to do is go into your binding tool and then apply binding to the garment as normal. So again, you can apply binding in both the 3D and 2D. I personally like applying binding in 2D window. It's just a little bit easier for me. Now that I've applied binding, I will see that appear both in my 3D and 2D window. I can simulate and see it and adjust it and make any changes that I want to. Now when I go into my print layout mode, I will then see the patterns automatically create within it. Isn't that great? We wanted to help clean up our user's working space and through that we have started to remove the unused materials. So now when you go into your 2D pattern window and select show pattern name, you will see that the button names are no longer visible. To give our users more information, we have now added a composition information under the property editor for trims as well. It is very simple to find. Just select your trim and then in the property editor, you can then see composition and you can start to write that composition for the trim. Nice, right? We have now made adjusting normal maps for graphics even easier than ever. Within 7.1, now you will be able to edit normal maps the same way you can with fabrics. So when having a graphic like this or print artwork or anything, you can now go in that graphic style, select it, and in the normal map, you can see there is now transform option if you drop down and you can change the size and everything just like you can with fabrics. So I think this is a great addition and we think it will be really helpful for all of you. We have made a few more updates within our multi-texture editor. Now within 7.1, these updates include faster speed, multiple selections, multiple loadings, and just a little bit ease of use updates. So let's get into it. And as you all know, to bring in your multi-texture editor, all you have to do is go into your fabric and you can then select multi-texture editor icon. Now you can drag and drop your artwork into your layer section and now you can right click and say a fit to canvas. So this is really great because then what will happen is your canvas size will resize to fit into the new artwork. It will be really helpful because then you can tell things easily or adjust your artwork faster and everything will be nice and you can continue to edit and adjust the artwork as you would normally do with the multi-texture editor. So you can make changes, change the color. 
and make any updates as required. Another update we have is that now you can bring in Illustrator files as well. I can go to add and bring in some Illustrator files and now I can bring in multiple at once. So I can bring in multiple layers or multiple artboards all at once. And then I can just hit OK and now all three of those will load all together. This is pretty great. I can then continue to resize them, adjust them, move them around a little bit, hide one or show or we can just play around. Another great thing that I can do is select multiple at once while holding down control when multiple are selected. I can then edit them together as I'm doing right now. And another great thing is, as you can probably see on the screen, is the real-time updates in your 3D window, which are faster than ever. So we really have worked on improving the speed here and making sure that the changes that you make in multi-texture editor immediately show in your 3D window. So users will now have the ability to keep their color window open while editing and adjusting within Clow. So here I'm going to go to my fabric and we will open up our color window. Now, and now I can adjust and change these colors and you can simply hit apply and you will see that the window still stays open even if we switch to another fabric. Now we can change the color of this other fabric too. You can hit apply again and the window will still be open. This will allow you to keep changing your fabrics and keep adjusting and changing your colors as you're liking. And once you're actually uh, uh, ready to close the window, you just have to hit down. But you can also use this for even trims like zipper tape. I can select the zipper tape, change out the color, hit apply. I could then just go to singular just the tape instead of the teeth, apply a different color and then once finished, just hit done. Now in the colorway editor, you can minimize sections within it. So when I open the colorway editor, you can see sections on the side and you can now also see arrows near some of them. These arrows are all pointing up, which means they are showing all the information under each section. If I click on the arrow, now it will point downwards considering the section and only the first line will show, which will display only what you need to see at the moment. We have also updated our UI within the object browser to provide the users with ways to organize and prioritize their fabrics. So let's start off with the top section first. Here you have the new folder button, which will open up the new folders. You also still have the add button, which will add new fabrics, copy button, which will copy the fabric that is selected and assign, which will assign the selected fabric to your selected pattern. Now let's look at creating folders. So if you go into the open folder button, you can easily add and create folders just by clicking on it. And to the left of this, you have the edit folder option. Here you can actually edit the folder's name to whatever you want. You can also hide and show the fabrics inside each of these folders using the button right next to the edit folder option. So here I have selected this option for the first folder and you can see all of my fabrics are hidden and shown. Now let's move on to adding fabrics within the folders. To the right side, you have add button, which will help you add new fabrics within the folder. Next, you have the open option. This will open up your computer files to allow you to bring fabrics from anywhere in your computer. 
This doesn't have to be Clo default fabrics. It can be any other fabric that you have saved on your computer earlier. Then you finally have the delete option. This will delete the folder and then all the fabrics that were previously in this folder will move up to the folder at top. You can also drag and drop fabrics to other folders. So here I can just drag and drop these bottom fabrics into bottom folder. But one thing to note here is that when you right click, you actually have options for dragging and dropping. The default option is drop and move. That means when you drag and drop, it moves the fabric to the new folder. We also have right click, drop and link option. This will link two fabrics. So whatever happens to one fabric will also happen to the other. For example, here if I change the color of this fabric, it will also affect the other one. So you need to keep these things in mind while working with folders and arranging your fabrics. One improvement has been made for import as trim option. Now, when you import as an FPX with matte shapes, they will be combined in version 7.1. So as you can see in 7.0, they are separated. If we go in the same tab, we have two separate trims actually. But in 7.1, they're just one trim and you can still select them separately. In 7.1, it is now possible to add a mixed map to the avatar and skin. I already have an avatar in my workspace, so I'm selecting the avatar by clicking on it and, within this, and with the selection tool in the property editor, we can change the material type to skin. As you scroll down in the property editor, you will see that there is a mix map option which has been added under subsurface scattering section. You can bring in or import a mix map. I'm opening the render window now and we will bring in a light source to see the difference. You can see that it looks so much more realistic now. You can also adjust the mix map from the, from the property editor. Here you can see that when we decrease the mix map, the light color is coming through. When we increase it, you can see that you can see the difference, especially around the ears. You can play around with various parameters in the property editor and adjust it according to your requirements and your liking. And you can see the difference. In Close 7.1, we have updated our render window and UI to improve the user experience. So let's look at the updates in the render light presets. Let's open the light properties in the render window. And here in the property editor, you can find the preset section. Once you open the drop down, you can see that we have added nine more presets, making it a total of 20 presets. Pretty great. Now you can hover over these presets and see previews for each of them, making it very convenient. You can choose whichever preset you want by clicking on any one of them. Once you select a preset, you can adjust the settings such as you can set the intensity of the light. Now, in case you don't like the result after making the adjustments, you can always reset it to the original preset. In order to reset, you need to scroll up and click on the reset button. Another update that we have done is to our UI in the render window. In the property editor, you can now see a little icon next to the name of the lighting. So here next to the dome, there is an icon that shows a dome and light coming out of it. That happens for all the lights. This makes it easier for the users to get an idea to which lighting is being used and what the lighting would do, how it will fall at a quick glance. This brings us to the final updates in our render window. This update is also related to the lighting. In the property editor next to the name of each light source, you can now see three icons. Using the bulb icon, you can activate and deactivate the light source. You can use the icon next to the bulb to show or hide the light in the 3D window. And likewise, you can show and hide the light in the render window with the icon, which is here.
So all of these things are going to make your workflow much more easier and convenient. Thank you so much for watching the webinar. Please like and subscribe to this channel. We have so many great videos to help you all out. It's all free and accessible for everybody. And again, there will always be a Clo team member to help answer your questions or queries. We always try to be there for all of the users as much as possible. Thank you so much again for watching the video and we hope this video helps you and makes you jump onto Clo 7.1 super soon.